Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube video. Today I've been asked a question by one of my subscribers about how I do my photo editing and in specifically about how I process my bracketed images or the HDR images. And I just wanted to briefly go through this process with you. Uh, it's very simple, very easy to do if you've got the editing programs and uh, just wanted to obviously talk about that one today, particularly using a couple of images that I caught on my recent trip out to Dover Court. So let's jump into the computer and take you through the process. So these are the five images that I've taken at the lighthouse at Dover Court. And as I've set up my EOS R camera, it takes five exposures first one being here is the base image exposure and as you can see from the details up here 24mm ISO 50 f11 and 0.3 of a second as the base image it then takes the exposure down slightly for two stops underexposed which is this image one stop underexposed one stop overexposed and then the fifth and final image is the two stops overexposed. And as I obviously calculate that in the camera, it will obviously take all those adjustments. Now, normally speaking, most cameras would be able to take three images. So the base image and either uh, the base image and then one underexposed and one overexposed. And then you have those three images to then blend together in post-production. However, as I say, I've set up my EOS R to take five images. And why have I done that? Well, the reasoning why I've actually done the five images is so it's got more that I can use when I come back to do the edit. I tend to use, as a general rule, the base image plus the two underexposed images. I don't necessarily like to use that often the one stop overexposed and I hardly ever use the two stops overexposed image. I find that that probably just brightens the image way too much. But that said, that's my general rule. However, I've still got that information should I require it when I'm obviously back into the computer and doing all of my post editing. So it's key to remember when you're out in the field taking the images that you need to be able to capture as much information as possible and by doing that you're there to make sure that you've got every possible opportunity to create the image or the desired image that you really want to do and uh, that's a real key thing I, I, I think um, about my photography is that uh, these scenes, these locations, yeah, okay, it's not too far away from me, but the, the scenes and the conditions are never going to be replicated. Um, and having as much information as possible in your camera and then back onto the computer once you're editing it will work out really quite well. And that's always a key thing to remember to do. Simply then, how I go about uh, editing the image is using Lightroom, as you can see that I've got up here, selecting the desired images, like so. I'll include for this demonstration the uh, one overexposed image, one stop overexposed, and then simply by doing a right click on there, you go to Photo Merge HDR and click that. It will then process and take a little bit of time, depending on the speed of your computer, to give you a preview. So here we have the merged image of those four images all merged together. Quickly running through the settings here, I've got the auto align and auto settings boxes ticked. The deghosting amount I've clicked as none, and the create stack I've left unchecked. Now, for this image, it's balancing it really quite well. I think I like the detail here that you've still been able to retain the detail around the bright spot, which is obviously the sun. And yet, I've still got some really nice detail in all the foreground and in the darker areas as well. And also including this side of the lighthouse, 
which is again the main subject. So once you're happy with that, simply just click on the merge button and it will process the image and merge all of those four images together to give you what's in the preview. With the image now opened up into the develop module of Lightroom, you can see on the right hand side here that there's the adjustments that the HDR pre um, merge has obviously created here. Now, as you can see in the top corners here, where I've had my filter set on, there is a bit of vignetting going on. So simply for me, what I tend to normally do, as it is in the far corners, I tend to just really recompose and crop that out anyway. I tend to like to take a slightly wider shot and then recompose it by cropping slightly. And with the grid up here, as you can see, just slightly cropping in from one side to the other and then readjusting it as and when I feel it's appropriate, which pretty much there is the kind of image that I really wanted. Um, when I was in, in the field, I remember that I wanted a lot more of the image of the foreground and then the sky with the lovely colors there as well. Hence, this is the kind of crop that I really want. Clicking done on that and simply making just a few minor adjustments, I think on this side, I like to increase the texture slightly just to make it a little bit more crisp across all the wavy patterns of the sand and the mud in the foreground. Uh, scrolling down slightly, uh, I increase the sharpness ever so slightly, give or take. Um, I tend to apply a little bit of noise reduction as well. And scrolling down slightly, I'm quite happy with the colors on this. I wanna make sure as well that the auto transform button is put on as well, just so to make sure it's as level as possible. I do play around a little bit with the calibration uh, sliders at the bottom on some of my images. However, within this one here, there's no sort of real need to um, play around with them because the the detail and the color that's been naturally presented uh, within this image, I, I don't feel like I need to alter that in, ever uh, at all really. And I tend to finally finish off the image by just adding on a post crop vignette. So I tend to darken the area slightly, probably a little bit too much there, yeah just a little bit here to kind of add to draw in, in the eye into the center of the images and the main point. If I was to obviously darken it too much, for example here, you can see that that's way too much there. And I tend to then take it too much and then start to draw the slider back ever so slightly. So yeah, give or take around about sort of uh, minus uh, nine to 10 would be quite happy. And simply to finish off, I would just right click again and then export the image into the saved file on uh, my desktop. So that's a brief overview of how I go about processing my HDR images or my bracketed images. And it's a pretty simple thing to do once you've obviously got the editing software to process the images and it's just waiting for the computer to process that image and then finally making those little minor adjustments uh, once you've got that compiled image. And I've done it many a times and I think um, bracketing the uh, images is, is one of the key things about digital photography. I know at the time that I had uh, obviously the filters on this uh, particular image. So yeah, even with the filters on, um, you still, I feel, I personally wanted to still do this type of uh, bracketing as well. Um, some people think, well, why don't you just use the filters to get that uh, image all in one? Yeah, that's fine. It, I mean, at the end of the day, photography is a personal perspective about it. I prefer to have the filters on and to also bracket purely because of the point I made earlier is that I would rather come away with more information, more images, more bracketed images than I necessarily need and 
throw away or not use the ones that I don't necessarily need but at least that means that I've still got all of that information when I'm back on the computer processing the images. Hopefully you found this uh, useful as a little bit of a brief run through of how I go about processing this type of uh, images. If you have please let us know in the comments below how you may do something slightly different because again everyone's all learning and sharing that uh, experience uh, about how to use Lightroom, Photoshop and whatever other editing program you use. Please feel free to uh, leave a comment below and uh, obviously others may well find that helpful. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. Next time I'm hopefully going to be back out in the field, back to my normal type of photography. So until then, take care. Mm -hmm.